Well, good afternoon. Uh, so good that you could be here today. Um, it is a nice fall day out. A little cloudy and it was a little foggy this morning, but uh, still a nice day. Um, just a couple things to remind you about. Uh, we have worship on Sunday, 9 at Ottawa, 11 at uh, Sundall, like normal. And then uh, some have asked about the spaghetti uh, fundraiser on Saturday. That is still happening. Um, uh, we will have uh, folks at the church all day getting things ready. And then from four to seven, I uh, invite you to call the church uh, or stop by um, for curbside pickup. Uh, and if you want something delivered, just give a call to the church that day or ahead of time. You can always call Joan uh, Huso. Uh, she's taking down a list and, and starting that process. Um, so that is still happening. That is still uh, a go. Uh, I'll probably try to promote it a little more on our Facebook page, um, but spread the word that that is still happening. Again, those funds going to go to offset the cost of uh, getting some siding put on the parsonage here. Um, uh, church bells will not be out this week. Uh, I'm going to start working on that hopefully um, early part next week. So we'll try to have that uh, to you by the first Sunday in October, uh, which I believe, if I do my math right, is the 4th. Yes, the 4th, October 4th. I had to do, had to do some quick math there. Uh, so I think that's what I have as far as announcements go. Um, uh, I uh, want to just uh, extend a special thank you to Bill, um, who might be on right now with us. Uh, my thanks to Bill for uh, really stepping up and uh, taking on uh, some uh, of my duties at church this week, leading education, leading worship. Um, a big thank you to Karen uh, Retzloff as well for helping with confirmation last night. Um, it, uh, it's just a blessing to me to know that I have some folks that uh, will step up and do those things. Uh, so my thanks to them. A passage that uh, I chose today comes to us from Ephesians. And I, I've probably used this one before, but um, perhaps this is just a different take on it. It says, be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven. It kind of made me think, I know there's been times in my life, but do you ever find yourself uh, kind of defining life by before and after something that hurts you? Something like a conversation or um, a divorce or a breakup, a, a death that you never saw coming or a day somebody walks away from you or just things like that. Those are, it, it's, it's a marked moment in time. And, and I sometimes will, will take some of those heartaches and those, those breaks and those sh things that and I'll go, what was time like before that? What is life now? Is it even possible to move on from something like that? Is it possible to kind of create that life that you had before that moment? Well, I, I guess I understand this kind of defining devastation in such a, a personal way. I wish, maybe like you, that it didn't have such a, a true, that uh, true depth to it, but it does. When your heart has been shattered or reshaped into something that doesn't quite feel normal the word forgiveness doesn't just roll off but this passage be kind to one another tender-hearted forgive 
one another as God in Christ has forgiven. Again, forgiveness, it just sometimes is unrealistic, but it's something that we so need in life. We need to forgive and we need to be forgiven. And I know I talk about it. I know that I've used this time together to talk about it, but it's not something that we need to, we should ever forget. Forgiveness is possible, even though sometimes it may not feel possible. It really is kind of a double-edged word, isn't it? It's hard to give forgiveness. It's amazing to get it though. But when we receive it so freely from God and then refuse to give it, that's when the heaviness starts, I think. Forgiveness isn't something that needs to be hard. It is something that should come to us through Christ so easily. You see, it's our part in forgiveness that we need to take these words. Forgive one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. I think that's what it is. It's about us knowing that God sent his son, that God sent to us someone that would live among us, that would feel our pain, that would feel our shame, that would feel our heartache, but then would take all of that and say, you're forgiven. Father, forgive them. And we are. And he tells us that we need to give that to one another. I will be honest with you. It is hard for me to forgive. It's hard for me to, to say, yes, I've been wronged or that hurt me. You hurt me. And to say, but I forgive you. But if we listen to God's word, and this isn't the only place that talks about forgiveness. But this, this passage to forgive one another as God in Christ has forgiven us. I challenge you. I challenge you if there is somebody in your life that has hurt you, that you've struggled so much with to forgive, that you hear the words. Ephesians 4, 32. Hear the words. Pray that God will give you guidance. And then forgive. I'm not asking you to ever forget what happened because that's almost impossible. But if we can forgive, it will release a weight on us as well as bring peace. So yes, again, I talk about forgiveness, but it is something that I think we struggle with as Christians. We struggle with giving it more than receiving it. So take time. Ask God the right way to forgive. And if it's hard for you to forgive, if you think back to some sermons I I gave a while back, I said, sometimes we just need to pray. God, please just forgive them and lead me to be able to forgive. So that's the charge I leave with you today. If you have a heartbreak, if you have a moment in life where you want to go back to how it was before, because it hurts so much with how it is now, Find time to hear those words. Forgive one another as God and Christ 
has forgiven. Would you pray with me? Father God, we, we come to you. We come to you as sinners needing your forgiveness. May we accept that. And may we in turn have the heart to forgive one another. Father God, I just ask that you be with us all as we just go through our daily lives. That you strengthen us, that you continue to give us hope, that you bring joy to our life. And in those moments where we feel alone and sad and heartbroken, may we know that you are there. Send the Holy Spirit to comfort and guide. Father God, we lift up to you all those that are hurting, whether it's in body, mind, or spirit. Just be with them and hold them close to you. Comfort their pain. God, we lift up to you our churches. May we continue to be places of rest, of worship, of fellowship, of love. Father God, I'm grateful for those that lead your church, whether pastors or deacons or Sams or team students or lay people. May they all feel your sense of God. And especially here, God, I'm grateful for leaders to step up when I can't be there. Father God, we raise to you Bill, Karen, Joan, Judy, all those that help lead. We raise to you Janice and our musicians our readers, our acolytes, everybody, that we may all continue to be good stewards to you and proclaim you in our worship. Father God, we continue to pray for our country, our state, our cities, as we go through this virus, as we go through civil unrest, as we go through political unrest, Bring calm, bring compassion, bring understanding, bring kindness, and most of all, bring love. All this we raise to you in those things that weigh heavy on our hearts that we don't know what to say or how to say to you. Hear them. And may we always proclaim your Son as the risen Christ. And it is in his name that we say, Amen. Thank you for taking time out of your day to be here. It is just a privilege and a pleasure to spend some time with you. Whether we do it live or you come back later and spend some time here. I pray that the scripture that is presented and the message is meaningful to you. I may not have all the wisdom in the world, far from it, but I know I'm loved by Christ. I'm led to serve. And I hope that bringing this message to you, this time of devotion to you, touches you just as much as it touches me to be a part of that. So until I see you again, may God bless you. May God wrap his arms around you. And have a great day. Bye for now.